Tom Morgan to Tights TV, uh, Match Reaction. We've got Ryan the Bearded Tights and Dan from the Grove uh, Street Gazettes. As always, it's a pleasure having you on. Uh, before we start, I know it's been banded about St. Patrick's Day and remembering our former custodian, the late Patrick Crine. Uh, it would have been his birthday today, so late heavenly birthday. Um, I don't know if any of you guys want to say out about Patrick Crime, but yeah, uh, on this day of all days, St. Patrick's Day, it is Patrick's uh, birthday. Yeah. What can I What can I say that hasn't been said before, mate? Um, you know, he... I think at times a lot of people didn't agree with what he did when he were, you know, when he'd buy and sell, sell players and stuff like that. But he did what he did to keep the club above above board. But what he did, he, he you know, he saved us and he's, he's the reason we've got a football club at the moment. Mm. He's the reason we go there. And I, 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 ain't got, I ain't got enough good words for him, mate. I ain't got enough good words for him. Um, you know, he'll he'll go down in history as one of us. One of the greatest ever people to be part of the football club. So, you know, happy birthday to Patrick. Dan? Yeah, certainly. Bloke that he's able to save the football club, and there's no other way you can kind of put that. Um, and there's, uh, I don't think there's any better, uh, uh, more positive things you can say after that. Because the reason why we go into a club on the week, go watch a club at the level that we, the level that we are, is because of Patrick. Um, yeah, he's, you know, and. You know, just uh, happy birthday, happy birthday uh, to Sir Patrick, and uh, hmm. and he'll always be a legend. At that he'll always be a legend at the club, um, and he deserves that place through what he did for yeah. for the town and yeah. for his local town and the uh, and the club. Yeah, rightly so. And um, like I say, all people are watching. Let us know your thoughts about you know the late Patrick Crime. But one thing for sure, and my what guys have said on here is that. We want to be in for uh, Patrick, we want to be a bounce football club at this level. Um, so, game back onto the game. Uh, Ryan, come to line up first. Williams left out on the bench. Yep. Ball move, big, big move. Um, two people raised eyebrows and back. I think, you know, he might have gone out to right win back roll. Again, Cosgrove starting, which I'm kind of pleased about Cosgrove starting. I thought off of that bit more, more of a call. Kind of knew that Kane weren't going to be starting that uh, that was last game, save suspension, I believe, uh, second game. So again, looking at the lineup and looking at Cheltenham where they are in league, you know, lowly Cheltenham in, in bottom four. Yeah, surely, even that lineup, it, 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 it was a winnable game, Ryan. It was definitely, oh, it was definitely a winnable game, and I, you know, I said after after we got beat, the Exeter that we needed nothing less than six points out of these two games. And uh, we've come up a bit short, haven't we, with the uh, with the draw yesterday? Listen, it, it was a ball, but we're never going to find out whether it's actually the fact that we've played five games in two weeks, um, which is border, borderline ridiculous from the planning from the league. I'm, I'm not going to go into that, but it's just it's just ridiculous. But anyway, um, five five games in two weeks. Um, whether it's the fact that he's a bit tired, or whether it's the fact that he's made quite a few mistakes in the last few games that have actually cost us goals. Um, but it was definitely a ball move dropping your captain. And putting him on bench, um, so I was glad to see McCart back in lineup. I want to see centre backs in there. If we're going to play a back three, I want to play see actual centre backs in back three. So I was pleased to see McCart come back in into back three. Um, and again with Cosgrove up front, it went right call. It went right call on Tuesday night, and it went right call to yesterday. And I thought he actually played well, and I, I don't know why he took him off. I don't know why he took Cosgrove off first. Mm. But anyway, yeah, def- definitely a winnable game, mate. Um, I thought we started really brightly. I thought we started really well. For, in, fact, in fact, for the vast majority of the first half, we, we, we played some nice football. We played some really nice stuff. Um, and we should have been... The game should have been dead and buried at halftime. Mm-hmm. Should have been dead and buried at halftime. We should have been three or four in front. We had really clear chances. For whatever reason, we didn't have us finish. You know, we didn't have us scoring boots on. And, and, and their keeper actually made a couple of really good saves as well. So, you know, fair play to I think their keeper were definitely man at match because he, he manages area really well as well as making the saves. He'll come out, he'll win everything from crosses and stuff. So, so fair play to him. But that second half, man, oh, jeepers. What, what, what can you say? I mean, it was just, it were flat, it were boring. It went back to same stuff that we were watching early on in the season that we were all really frustrated with. I was just really disappointed in the second half, mate. And it's like, like you said, we had opportunity to gain points on 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 the top four. As it as it panned out, it, it couldn't have worked out any worse with with uh, Portsmouth and Derby both winning 
as they were the top two, but it would have been as you were, you know what I mean? We'd still have been in touching distance, but now we're seven points away from Derby with eight games left. I think that's, I think realistically, unless a collapse from from Derby, I can't see, you know, and then we've also got to expect Bolton not to, you know, to capitalise on that as well. We'll come on to that in a minute because I've seen something yeah. on socials about that debate and that, but it's a good point to come back to that um, about yeah. the where we are in the league. And I've seen some things on social. I'm thinking, uh, did you watch yesterday's game at all? <laughs> kind of thing, you know what I mean? So, Dan, mm. coming back to you, mate, I mean, like what Ryan was saying, first day, first 10, 15 minutes, it's sent to be, we couldn't do outright kind of thing. Well, uh, we're attacking, mm. attacking, attacking. But my son said, he says, I've just got a feeling today they're just going to nick a goal, then what? Because it's mm. just what's happening. We need to make the, these chances. I mean, like what Ryan said, they're their goalkeeper. He was pulling off, I think, uh, from a corner, uh, sorry, from a free kick. He got down well and turned it round, and they were managing. And my son said, he says, I've just got an audible feeling it's, they're going to go and hit this because we've got to capitalise on our chances. And and again, I get where your Ryan were coming from, the second half especially. Too much tippy tappy outside. So never go, every shot. We're trying to overcomplicate things. Over, just but when you were here, I don't get this like when people are shouting when you're 45 yards out, shoot. I don't get this. At all. No, that's ridiculous. But no. when, we're in, when we're in area or when we're in the box, cross it in. And, but we weren't doing that, uh, Dan. We, we seem to be like looking for the final pass, the final through ball. I just didn't get that, mate. No, I didn't either. And I think when you look at games where we've attacked quite well, um, where we've been good going forward, oh, we've gone, sorry, we've gone one nil down in games. So we've played well going forward, but we've we've conceded from a corner or whatever late and or it springs to mind, Derby springs to mind. Mm-hmm. Um, in that game against Leighton Orient, we caught him napping at back, long ball forward, probably caught him unawares. Phillips comes running in and scores an equaliser. Then we've got we're in ascendancy. And then when you look at Derby, obviously we, we went 1 0 down through, I think Bradley Johnson scored from a corner. And then you've got Adam Phillips ripping one out from 25 yards after a good touch, sets it down, boots it into bottom, boots it into corner. And then we're in ascendancy and then we can go and challenge and try and win game. I think that there has been, um, I think there's a level of arrogance going into these games, uh, thinking that we can, we can, well, the bottom of the league, we can kind of pass through them. I suspected that a little bit at Wickham, if I'm on, at Wickham, sorry, at uh, Carlisle. Um, when we went, they were just, it was just like arrogant where we were setting up. It was like, oh, well, you know, we're just going to try and pass it about a bit and try and get into the game. And then seven minutes gone, they scored first. Mm-hmm. So you've got a warning, you know, there's a warning shot, but there's been plenty of times where we've gone into games like that this season and we've struggled through it. We look like, I don't think that people understand this from the fans' perspective, but it looks like it comes to a, you come to a conclusion at the end of the game and thinking, Jesus Christ, we've made hard work out of that. You know, we've made really hard work out of a team, which, let's be honest, Derby Bolton have smashed four past and the two nil up in first half and they go out second half and smash them again. And it's and that's what's tainting fans' opinion at the moment, I think. Um that I don't think this is correct, but I think a lot of fans are thinking, well, I think we've been quite lucky. We've been quite lucky where we've had those opportunities, we've had that one chance in games where we've got ourselves back into it. We've scored that goal. We've scored a goal that's that's that knocked confidence out of other team, and it's usually quite late on in second half. So, but yeah, I mean, in regards to game, first half were good. You know, we attacked, but I think when I saw that starting lineup, Neil, I I just it made me nervous immediately. I don't think we've got that quality coming off the bench, and when we want to rest players, when we want to rest players, we are. I immediately dread it because we've got somebody coming off at bench and they can't affect game when they do come on pitch. I mean, you know, we... Okay, if I'm still not 100% certain of that, I think he's too soft. I mean, Russell, to be fair, he had a good game yesterday, but I think one... And he had a good game against Carlisle. But apart from that, I think he's not shown anywhere near level of consistency. And then, obviously, you are, you, you know, Cosgrove as well. I know he started and he, he started against uh, Carlisle. He did fairly all right. But, you know, 
it, it's it's this is what we felt we're going to, we were going to struggle with in January because we, when we all had a chat in January and said, do you think January, but also going back to like summer as well, Dan? You know, yeah, the, you yeah, know, the personnel, you know. We, we well, uh, I, I remember arguing it summer that it were like, well, we've got players in those positions, so technically we have depth. You know, we have players to fill positions if somebody goes off injured, if somebody goes out injured, or we need to rest somebody. But I think in January we all we already knew mm. the players who come on, they're not showing the levels of consistency. It's not like we put them into squad and go right, you're in, and then they just hit ground running, and then it's like. They're showing competition for places. It's not. As soon as Russell, as soon as we know, as soon as Kane comes back, Russell's going to be up bench. Yeah, that yeah. says quite a lot. And uh, yeah, I, I think I think that was the the killer against against Cheltenham. And I think as although we attacked and they showed intent and things like that, I think after a while it just showed that lack of cohesion, the lack of um, knowing who was going to make that run, the lack of and then, obviously, when we got to 80th minute, we were just trying the same things we'd done over and over again. We were just yeah. trying to play it down a card, not left wing. He was going to put a ball in. By that stage, Cheltenham had put four in box, and they were perfectly happy playing like that. Yeah. And they did. They defended well. And you can't knock them for that. They've come here and, yeah. and I would argue, kind of deserved a point for how yeah. they defended. No, no. I would definitely uh, agree with that. Yeah, definitely agree with that. Yeah. So, but it's, uh, it's disappointing. It's... Uh, it feels like a bit of a, it still does feel like a bit of a square peg round hole situation. Yeah. And um it, it it feels it it kind of goes into the argument that maybe we haven't got that finished product. And um it's sad, but that's the re that's that's the that's the reality of it. But then again, there's no there's no downloading those achievements this season. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean I agree with what you said, Veer, with players and stuff like that. And my my concern is, I mean, Quinty will try and get on the bar with some shoots and stuff like that. And the, the tactics, because I've got a radio show, I was on Radio Sheffield last night and Adam Oxley asked me, and I tell them my thoughts about it, is that back in summer, we lost some key influential players. And this isn't new. So people be jumping around saying, oh, yeah, but we, we didn't play off so we've got this. Right. My worry is, the amount of people, personnel, the players that were bought in uh, summer, how many of them have gone out on loan since? Hmm. Well, how, many of them, how many of them in the team, Neil? Cosgrove. And he's on Cosgrove, Cosgrove coming summer. Of yeah. his own players that we signed. No, I'm not talking about loan ease. Uh McAtee and Roberts. Yeah. So, yeah. But you look at Casper Bopeter. I mean, yeah, yeah, his own players. I'm talking about own players that were signed, not the loanee. So his own right, players right, right, that right, right. coming to squad as as signed for Barnes FC. It's Cosgrove, isn't it? And he's only recently just come in. So Lopata, Shepherd, all that, and uh, Andy Dallas. Players, they've all, uh, they've all house. Yeah, players that out. came in, they've all been loaned back out. So out you can't go That's back it. to them and just like what Dan was saying is that yeah, we've got players for that position, but you you also need the quality. If 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 you're using last season as a spring step, a springboard to move on from, it's like fair enough. We all kind of knew Anderson were going to go. Kitchen wanted to go, you know. So a contingency plan is right. We need that. We won't be here at Wembley, right? Next season we definitely want to be good pushing for it again. So what do you do? Do you go out and get one player that's got that quality, what can come in and make a difference? Yeah. Or do you go out and get three central defenders? You know, Wapatar, uh, Shepherd, and um, Lofthouse for next to note, but you've got plenty of numbers here. What, what's pointing back when they're out on loan? They want to be at yeah. Barnsley doing a job that our players, our players should be doing red shirt on. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, that goes back to the summer. Back in January, people screaming out. Even I think even Collins wanted a, a, a striker attacker. He could identify certain areas. Fair enough, we addressed the centre back issue. We've got Pines in, but unfortunately, it looks like he's out for a, a while. Mm. Uh, Earl came in, fantastic. Yeah. But then we've got a young lad called Conor Grantin who's coming on loan. It might work out for him, it might not. And we're, we're back again. It's like, what well, the ambition of the board, and I'll get on about this in a minute, 
we've then best another board to really go for it on the shoestring that we can. It's not much of a gamble. Or do we go, now? if it works, it works. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'd like to think it's not. I'd like to think that we actually are going to show an intent to go for it. But going back up to the game, Ryan, when I'm looking at the players coming off at bench, like what Dan said, what plays made a difference? What's going on? What, what, someone, nobody's coming back pitching and said, grind a piece of paper out. What's pe I want someone to be proactive, like in Collins, and say, right, we're not offering that much, really, Cheltenham in second day. Let's go far at back, free in midfield, free up front. We know that we need our results. Yeah. But when we when fetch a player on, it's like for like. We're not taking game to him, like what Dan said, Via. We play out to Cadden, Cadden gets down. They've, they've already prepped up for it. They know what's going to come. We're yeah. not doing that. We have, we've not got a plan B to say, right, this ain't working. We need to mix it. We need to push further forward. We far at back. We just seem to go through the same old, same old. And oh but we're going to get somewhere Ryan. yeah and the frustrating thing for me neil was that the, the, the change of tactics that that, that that were required especially in second half we'd already we'd already we'd already implemented in at the start of the first half we'd already done it and we already could see the success that we've got from it in the first half when we were playing ball on floor we we're playing fast attacking football and then for whatever reason christ knows we went we started going to that Trike that we were watching earlier on in the season where it's sideways, backwards, sideways, <coughs> backwards, lump it forward. And their defenders were just lapping it up. It literally, 95% of the time, they won that header or it went straight through to the keeper. And it was just, we just did it over and over and over again. Like just, it just, we, it, it were really, really poor. And all that needed to happen was just go, go back to what you were doing it first half. Go back to what you were doing it first half. Stop lumping it forward like idiots and stop because it ain't working. Surely somebody can take a grasp on the field. Somebody, that's I think that's where we lack that experience, Neil. I think that's where we lack that that leader to say, this ain't working, we need to do something else. You know, get hold of them and say, come on, we need to get, get back to what we were doing it first half and that were working. So they weren't even like they needed to went, do anything rev revolutionary. It just They just needed to go back to what they were doing. And the fact that they just kept doing it over and over and over again in the second half, w w I think, were the most frustrating thing because it was just easy to defend and they could just see it come in or it were over it mm -hmm. and it was just, yeah, it was garbage. And I think, you know, we said at end of January, you know, I was really pleased with Pines and, and Earl's uh, signings, mm -hmm. don't get me wrong. You know, yeah, they yeah. were two really positive signings that we could probably have done with doing it doing it in summer. But anyway, you know, the fact that we didn't make a, a sign a striker um, I think re he's really holding his back. And we said at the end of January, yes, it looks a good start in 11. But if we lose players to suspension or we lose players to to injury, it's going to make us, we're going to be a bit threadbare from, from a quality standpoint. And that's for, that's, that's for starting 11. That doesn't even start to come when you're, when you're playing with a weak mm. start in 11 and then you've got to bring subs on. Mm. So I think it's showing now. Um, it's showing now, isn't it? And it showed it showed yesterday. Just just unfortunately when players are out or when we need to make a change to the game or do something different to try and, you know, change the the, the, the path of the game round, it, it's just not there, unfortunately. Yeah. Damn. I mean, frustrating second half substitution didn't have an impact and it's a light for light replacement. It's not like what Ryan just said, you're looking for that character, that leader, that old head on pitch to say, look, this isn't working, we need to play it down, this, alter it, but it won't, mate, will it? It was just going through, it, for me, it just seemed to be like Ben going through motion because it was, we don't know how to tell us what to do, we don't know how to change it or up like that. It was, I don't know, I, I, I was just baffled in the second half of me, how it was going, and I think all those fans could see is that this ain't working, this ain't mm -hmm. working. And no disrespect to someone like uh, Phillips, but for Cosgrove to go off first, I'm thinking you, you want that attack threat. It's yeah, I just didn't get it, mate. I just didn't get it. Yeah. Mate. Second half at all. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, you've said what you both said. What what's already needs to be said, and and it's it's obvious. It's there glaring at you. It's there glaring at you, really. Um, I th I think the do I massively blame. Would I have took Cosgrove off? I don't know. Maybe I would have gone three up front and kept them all on pitch. I, you know, and tried to take maybe somebody out of midfield or 
or going back or go go to four at back maybe. But you know, he, again, it, it's like that where you you know every time I'm looking at it, going right, we need a change, we need, and I'm, I'm but then you look towards bench and it's like really who's going to change game on that who, who is going to change the game on that bench yeah i mean we've got connor grant i mean god i think we've got connor grant in um if i'm going to put a prediction out there i think from what i've seen of him is quite a similar play to Irby. um why he's not starting i have no idea i don't know what he needs to do to start connor grant i really <laughs> don't um but I think that may I think it weren't there an option to buy it and yeah end of this transfer. Yeah. 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 I think that's kind of, and you've got a player that a very similar type of player that's running out of contract to end it year. I'll let you build your yeah. own assumptions on that. Yeah. Maybe I could be completely wrong. And I, no. and if I am, then shoot me. It's too coincidental, isn't it? He's absolutely nailed on it. That's that's exactly <laughs> yeah. what's happening now. It's nailed on. Yeah. Herbie yeah. yeah. resigning for bad. And I won't be, I won't be, and from what I've seen of Conor Grant, to be fair to him, I'm not, I won't be too bothered about. It. I think he's, I think he's a decent player, but, yeah. he, he, but he hadn't played enough, he hadn't played enough to go out there and change a game, and he hadn't gone, and then you've got Barry Cotter. I'm not even going down Cotter route mm. um, today. We're, we're already, we're already 21 minutes in. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, so, but then you've got, you know, and I just look towards bench. And I think, yeah, I want to make a change. I want to switch it up. I want to do this. I want to do that. And I just don't, I just don't see players there to do it. I just do yeah. not see how we, we would do that. Well, we would do that to a point, either we would get a goal or two, we would defend or we'd be able to defend game and stop Cheltenham, Cheltenham breaking forward. I think a big feature that, that not many people's pointed out. Curtis Davis at back for Cheltenham, 38 year old. He's played EFL football at a quite high standard for the most of the majority of his career. He knows every trick in book. Yeah. He had an absolute field day yesterday. He had a yeah. great game. And yeah. that that says a lot that he can kind of read game from his experience and go. Yeah, I know what's going to happen here, boys. You follow me. Other two defenders, other two defenders that were defending alongside him. Right, just follow me. We'll just go in the line, and that's what they did. And after half time, I think they kind of sussed it and knew that we had no reply to that. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and I think that's how it ended nil nil. And I think Cheltenham were perfectly happy going going for draw. I don't blame them either. It's um, a good point for him, mate. It's a good, you know, oh, if, you're, if, you're going, if you're thinking about, you know, someone who's down at bottom of the league against one of promotion rivals, and you're going away, you know, and you've had you've been beaten by them three times in last in last three, yeah. last three times you played them, you, you're going to be perfectly happy to come away with a draw, especially a, especially a, 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 um, a goalless draw because you know they, they've not conceded, they've come here. That'll do their that'll do their confidence world of good. So, like you said, like we said earlier, I don't want to take too much away from Cheltenham. No, no, definitely not. They, they, they dealt with what we certainly in second half. They dealt with everything that we sent to them, and they defended. They did what they did. They played like a bottom aside, you know, scrapping for points down at the bottom, and they, they they deserve what they got. Yeah, yeah, and and, and that's the thing, and you know, it's and imagine that imagine that confidence confidence boost that's going to give them. They're going to go. Yeah. We've just defended against a side, which well, let's be honest. The, Fifth in league, you know, playoff contenders, and I, I, I'm, I can say we've, Jesus, here we go, touch wood, uh, relative confidence that we're going to get into playoffs. I think the gap's too big to fall. Oh yeah, I, 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 yeah, I think the mentality needs to shift now to make ensuring that we keep our place in playoffs and yeah, ideally okay. finishing, ideally finish third or fourth. Yeah, so we can get the home leg, uh, we can get the home tie uh, for the second leg. So yeah, absolutely. I think that's absolutely. what I think that's what we absolutely need to concentrate on now because we can all act like they say you can all have wishful thinking about you know finishing second, but realistically, it's going to take Pomp Pompey have done it. Pompey have done it for me. That they're, they're fine. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. They, they, have got some, they have got some difficult fixtures. Fi uh, fixtures, sorry, but I, I think Pompey going up champions, right? But for that second place, you've got to for us to catch it. We have got that game in hand, but we've got to win it for a start with a kick off. And then you've got to hope that Derby mess up. 
you know. Yeah. Um, and then if Derby mess up, you've got to hope that Bolton don't capitalise on it, and then yeah. hope that yeah, yeah. don't capitalise on it. You know. So I, I, th I just think there's just too many sort of um, reasons why we can't get it. There's two. There's Bolton and there's, there's Peterborough. There's us. We'd have to be really, really fortunate now to finish in second. I think. I think the the draw against Bolton in that 98th minute is gonna is, is knocked us a lot more than 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 we first thought. Yeah. Um, because we think, were in a position there at 2 0 against Bolton just a few games ago where we were absolutely in prime position to get that second place with the fixtures that we had coming up. And then it's just not it's just not panned out like that, has it, unfortunately? So I think no. listen, I think I'm not I'm not making excuses um for, for lads because for, for yesterday and what's happened in the last few games, but I think at beginning of the season, when we saw the squad and who would come in and who we bought, I think if we'd have, if we'd have been told we could finish in playoffs, we, we, we would have taken it there and then. Yeah. Um I just think it's disappointing that we got ourselves into such a good position to push for that auto place, and we've sort of fluffed his lines in 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 a few games, unfortunately. So, yeah, I think the mentality's yeah. got to shift now. Stop feeling sorry. Don't feel sorry for yourself now. It's about securing that securing that playoff place and going in with right attitude. As it's a massive opportunity in the playoffs, as opposed to you know sulking because we didn't because we've missed out on autos because that's not the right attitude to take in. Because if you look at the likes of Lincoln coming up, they're just absolutely flying at minute. And and there yeah. there it, it reminds me very much of, of of Barnsley in 2016 when they were, we just hit that rich vein of form and flew into playoffs and blew everyone in away. So mm -hmm. we're gonna have to shift his mentality now to that and focus yeah. on that. And, and if it does work, and if it does work out for autos, great. But it's 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 very very unlikely. We'll come I on to that in a bit, Ben. We'll get on about you know about where the season goes. Uh, we'll kind of tidy it off about in a bit. Well, just going back to former players, I mean, what you've got to think about, you mentioned being about Curtis Davis, is that Jack Shepherd, who played alongside him because he's on loan at Cheltenham, he spoke highly of Curtis Davis and he's shown me and he's learning me so much. So, again, it's a young lad who's gone against a, a pro, you know, someone there who's, you know, like you said, been through leagues. He just goes to show if we'd have brought a character in, someone like, I'm not saying Curtis Davis is such, but some a player of that kind of ilk, what benefit yeah. you can have to young lads what's been brought in? And getting on about players and ex-players like Shepherd came in for a certain player, Kitchen who got sold to Coventry. This brings me on to something else about social media, what's been banded about, and it's kind of riled me this as well. Is that you've got a board member in Julianne congratulating Liam Kitchen on some fantastic results at Coventry in the FA Cup, which is fine. Yet we're drawing against Cheltenham Town. And some, you know, fans, you know, have, have, have really called it out and saying, well, what about us? What about Barnsley? You know, next player gone beers, might some of that money get transferred into, you know, the coffers of Barnsley and try to implement and improve us. And there's been some instances where she's blocks or removed people off of social for that. But again, I mean, I don't know if you all guys want to comment on that, but should a board member really be congratulating someone at another club when... You know, we should begin it all for Barnsley. Privately, why not? Publicly, I'm not so sure. Mm. You, you, you know, mm. you're a board member of Barnsley Football Club. Liam Kitchen's gone. He's not. He's a Coventry player now. And I have to say, pleased for Coventry to get to the final yesterday. The way they come back with proper show, the proper magic of the cup. So you know, there were Brad Collins, um, Liam Kitchen, and 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 Bobby Thomas all playing mm. yesterday. So I'm, you know, I, I am pleased for them. I'm gonna, I'm gonna piss it all, especially as a board member, pissing it, pissing it on my socials. Is it, is it being some sort of you know, some, some sort of good thing. It's it's not. They've moved on and they're doing Private well. comment, I think, would have been all right. If you, want, if, if you, had, a, if you had a personal it. relationship with someone, you know, and you knew him well from, from being, you know, from being a board member at a former club, then just send a private DM to him and say, you know, really proud for you. Well done. Crap. Don't put it on your, don't put it on your public socials. Because then you're just going to rattle, you're just gonna all, gonna rattle your own fans. Yeah. I think, I think it wasn't, I think if the tweet would have not been followed by another tweet, let's yeah. say. Um, yeah. 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 Um, we've got to... It's never a good idea. I understand, and I, I, I'll i be quite transparent with you. I like Julie. I don't really have any problem with her. I think she gets a lot of bad rap. She just gets a lot of bad rap, and, you know, fans are entitled to their opinion, whatever, you know. But me, personally, I haven't got a problem with her. I think it is not good... 
to be. I understand that she ha she's in a position where she probably sees the players. She has a good relationship with the players. She has a good relation with the relationship with the manager. That's her job, and you know, and that's all well and good. So I understand there's a necessity to defend to defend the players, but it is not a good idea to be calling out. A let's be honest. I I, I heard the booze. I think that were coming from a quite small it's a section, section of fans. It's a section of fans. It's there a section, a section of, fans. of fans. Yeah, and it's always important not to focus on the you know the loud mm. minority. You got to try to all the same brush down is what she did. Yeah, yeah. Tyler's all the same brush, and that is especially after a, a frustrating performance, which probably means automatics have gone. Your timing of your tweet. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and your time is always the same, bro. That is proper poking the hornet's nest. Yeah. So she could have left that. I think it were ill timed, it ill timed, and just not advisable because your time yeah. is always the same, bro. But and, and it really, it's it, not, it, it, it's it, not, it, not. It, just, it pissed me off. Yeah, it pissed me off. I, 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 I didn't, but I weren't happy with the performance, but I didn't, boo. I didn't, neither did the vast majority of people. In fact, when we no, were, I didn't, out, we're coming I out, of it, I honestly, when I saw that tweet, I thought somebody faked it. I honestly, and I thought, come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah, I know what you mean. And and then when I found out the actual tweet were real, I, I thought, yeah. it's really, That's it's cool. not time. You've got to understand that, I'm going to end up offending you. It's an handful of people that do it. You've got to understand that football fans, we, we're not, they, they have different opinions and some of them are not going to be reasonable sometimes and it's going to be difficult but you've got to try and yeah yeah you've got that. to try and balance everything that's your job and i know that you it's you want to defend the players and you want to defend the manager i get all that but you've also got to understand that in every q and a session we've had julie nirav collins um, John Flatman, everybody we've spoke to, we want to see this club in championship. Mm. We want to see this club in championship. They're setting the agenda. They're setting what they want. And when that doesn't come, there is going to be a section of fans that are very unhappy about it. And yeah. that's the reality. So I, I didn't think Tweet was... I'm being very kind here. It was very ill-advised. Um, yeah. Ill-timed, and it shouldn't have happened. Because yeah. yeah. you know what it's like after a game? Um, I was snapped well, last year. That, you know, after the game, I was so upset after the game because... Yeah, that's that's that, up, I suppose. Yeah. So upset after the game because we passed up on that opportunity. And you're very emotional after a game. You're very emotional after a game. I, day after, I calm right down now, and it's like, right, we're nil-nil. We've got to fix some players. We crack, we, we crack on. The straight after the game, I am I'm raging, you know what I mean? I mean, emotions, I hope emotions are right, really high. I'm really spiked. And um, I just feel like, you know, if you send something out that's going to rattle the fans' cage, especially when the vast majority didn't boo, mm. you know, it's 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 probably not the best idea. And I should probably refrain from doing that in the future because, you know. Not, not a good call. Uh, so, getting back to league, uh, Ryan. Yeah. I think right now, and you know, automatics has gone. Automatics have gone for me. Um, you're looking at Lincoln. What you've just mentioned, beer made another five five note thrashing, didn't they? Yesterday, really, really good result for Lincoln. Um, yesterday, I am thinking the playoffs. It's a matter of play for position in playoffs, like now for Barnsley. It's got to, yeah, it's got to be made. We've got to be realistic. It, there's no harm in pushing in every game to in case that the other team slip up, but realistically, that's where we're going to that's where we're going to end up, isn't it? And I think ideally we need to finish third or fourth, so we've got the home tie um, in in the second leg. I think that's what what, what we realistically need to do, um, and 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 aim for that as a, as a, as a target as opposed to like an unachievable target, which is finishing in you know an unlikely unachievable target. And finishing in second and finishing with a negative attitude of, of, of having to make do with the playoffs. I think that that's what we we're talking about earlier. Is if you need to make that mentality shift and see it as a as a as a, as a huge opportunity to get promoted. And I think that's as, I think this realistically that is now absolutely his best chance to get promoted this season. Yeah. Dan, uh, obviously international bets come up, so it'll get players a, a bit more rest time. Uh, Coming from that, there's going to be more or less like week and midweek, week and midweek game coming up. So, you need players fresh fit and to tackle 
we've been saying to Ryan Beard is that it's automatics is over. For me, it is. Um, you know, it's too dependent on other teams to fluff up, and I don't think they will. I think they'll, you know, still do what we've got to do. It's a case of balancing out to play for a position in playoffs and get like what Ryan said via mentality switch and focus. Right, Collins might be using that as a yardstick. Right, second point, still achievable game, and blah blah blah, and all that. But in reality, you need to be playing for like third or fourth place. You need to be going for as high position that you can be doing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't think automatics are. Or, uh, I, there would have to be a serious disturbance in the fourth for there to be a chance of getting <laughs> automatic promotion at this rate. Yeah. Um, I yeah, just just try and just try and secure play, just, just secure playoffs and and players and just you've got to act, you've got to act that that promotion that that second spot is is achievable, even though you probably even though it's it's likely at this stage that it's not. Secure it best place um, in playoffs, making sure you get the best game. And I think as well, an important aspect to playoffs, going into it with form. You've got to go in there confident that you're going to be able to, you're going to be able to beat these teams because it's not going to be an easy, um, it's not going to be an easy um, a time at playoffs. Playoffs in essence, to say we've got to as many finals that we have, the reality is playoffs is a lot as a lottery. It yeah. doesn't matter. It, it matters how you play. It matters how you play it there. There's so, no, it's, it's roll of the dice, mate. It's who, 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 oh, can the who can hold the bottle is basically who's going to come out in playoffs. Yeah, and I think as well, if you get, th- I mean, even if we get third, I think it's very likely that Lincoln's going to get sixth at this point, at least. Mm. Um, and I don't fancy the prospect of playing them with the way they're playing at the moment. <laughs> but you know, if we go into that, if we go into that playoffs in form, you know, and we're we're firing on all fronts, and then Lincoln are still on their run of form, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tighter game. Um, so, you know, yeah, um, act as if and play and try and get the best best place in playoffs and go in there. We're going there with confidence. I think that's the aim at the moment. Yeah. Right, going there with confidence. That's what we can do uh, after that game against Cheltenham. Uh, Ryan Verbeer, the and Dan, as always, been a pleasure. Uh, some good yeah, thoughts, some good talks, some good debates. People, what, uh, what's watching? Let us know your thoughts about certain things. What's going on uh, with Barnsley, either on the pitch, on the socials. You know what I'm on about. Uh, is automatics over? Are we still? Is it still achievable? Are we playing for playoffs? Again, there's a lot of if buts and maybe's, but it's always interesting to know your thoughts and comments, uh, different perspectives and different opinions. That's what it's all about, opinions. But yeah, Ryan and Dan, uh, appreciate you taking time out. Uh, have a bit of a, we have a, a week's rest, but I might do a Friday night live, uh, depending on what happens for a week. I'll be more we can get Pines back uh, quicker, sooner, rather than expected. Uh, but we'll, again, a lot of unknowns at the minute. So, yeah, enjoy the rest of your weekend. It's not been a great weekend, has it? Uh, but it is what it is. Just to send it down. Players can get refreshed and take on for a challenge of what's going to be coming up. I see it's going to be a challenge coming up as well. Uh, one thing left to say, you were heads. <laughs>